So we know this is Palm Sunday. And we know that people shouted for joy when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. People's hearts were touched. And everybody celebrated Jesus. And while this is Palm Sunday, this is also Passion Sunday. We know that there is no triumph without suffering. We know there is no crown without a cross. And oftentimes we tend to gloss over some of the stuff in between the parade into Jerusalem and the eventual crucifixion of Jesus. And to miss out of, uh, on the events that are in between, such as the anointing, the Last Supper, and the trial would be robbing the crucifixion of its power and of its mystery. So today we are going to read all the way through the Passion story in Mark to see what happens after Jesus enters into Jerusalem on a donkey. Let us all be open to the words of the Gospel writer Mark, who gives to us the word this day, and let it set the tone for us in this upcoming Holy Week. And with that, our Gospel reading today is Mark chapter 14, it is verse 1. Through chapter 15, verse 47. And as you see in your bulletins, there will be hymns in between, and I ask that you remain seated as we sing these hymns, uh, and remain seated as we hear the scripture this morning. Let us now hear the words of Mark on this Passion Sunday. Good morning. I feel honored to read this story of Jesus' preparation as he goes forward to his crucifixion. The feast of Passover and unleavened bread were to be observed in two days' time, and therefore the chief priests and scribes began to look for a way to arrest him by some trick and kill him. Yet they pointed out, not during the festival, for the people may riot. When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman entered carrying an alabaster jar of perfume made from expensive aromatic nard. Breaking the jar, she began to pour the perfume on his head. Some were saying to themselves indignantly, What is the point of this exaggeration and waste of perfume? Could have been sold for over 300 silver pieces and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated at her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you criticize her? She has done me a kindness. The poor you will always have with you, and you can be generous to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could do. By perfuming my body, she is anticipating its preparation for burial. I assure you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then Judas is a carrier, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand Jesus over to them. Hearing what he had to say, they were jubilant and promised to give him money. For his part, kept looking for an opportune way to hand him over. On the first day of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Paschal Lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you wish to go to prepare the Passover supper for you? He sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the city, and you will come upon a man carrying a water jar. Follow him. Whatever house he enters, say to the owner. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat Passover with my disciples? Then he would show you an upstairs room, spacious and furnished, and all in order. That is the place you are to get ready for us. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found it was just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover supper. As it grew dark, he arrived at the twelve. They reclined the table. And in the course of the meal, Jesus said, I give you my word. One of you is about to betray me. Yes, one who is eating with me. They began to say to him, sorrowfully, one by one, surely not I. He said, it is one of the twelve, a man who dips into the dish with me. The son of a man is going the way of scripture, tells of him. Still accursed be that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
It was better for him that he had never been born. During the meal he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this. This is my body. He likewise took the cup and gave thanks and passed it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, to be poured out on behalf of many. I solemnly assure you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the reign of God. Good morning. Good morning. I'm reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 26 through 50. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to, de- to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed, a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going, at, going once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. I am, leading a, am I leading a rebellion, Jesus said, that you have come out with your swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. Jesus before the council. They took Jesus on to the high priest's home, where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of the religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find him. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We hear him say, I will destroy the temple made with the human hands, and in three days I will build another made without human hands. But even then, they didn't get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated in the right place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. 
Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his honor and said, Why do you need these other witnesses? You have heard all this blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fists. Prophecies to us, they jeered, and the guards slapped him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, You were one of the one of Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter denied it. I do not know what you're talking about, he said, and he went into the entryway, just as the rooster crowed. Then, when the servant girl saw him standing there, she began telling others, This man is definitely one of them. But Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, You must be one of them, because you are a Galilean. Peter swore, A a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed before Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, he would deny me three times that three times that you even know me. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom of the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. This is so hard to read. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling to their knees, they paid homage to him. And for Mark 15, verses 20 through 37. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, 
the king of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their head and saying, So, you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him all heap insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Shabbatni, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man went, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered to Jesus to drink. Leave him alone. Let's see Elijah come to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself, waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Let us go forth from this place this day, proclaiming that Jesus is our Lord, Jesus is our Savior. We will never abandon Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace.